friends are here on Cup of Vine today that give us legal advice on all things immigration. Aquino and Lowe. This American Dream segment is brought to you by Aquino and Lowe Law Firm, answering your immigration questions. Kasama natin ngayong hapon si Ms. Allison Aquino Silva at pag-uusapan natin ay ang family-based Petition for Green Card Holders. Hello, Allison. Good afternoon, G. You look so nice in blue. Same with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here once again. So let's talk about this because there's a lot of stuff that I personally didn't know. So specifically, many people are confused as to whether a relative petition for an unmarried 21-year-old and older is harmed. I didn't even know you could petition someone that's over 21. Well, that's a good point. You can. Um, and so, yes, if a child is unmarried over 21, a green card holder parent can file a relative petition on their behalf. Um, and as you point out, G, um, you know, there's a main, main question or confusion or concern as to whether a, a green card holder parent should remain a green card holder or whether they should become a U.S. citizen. And if they do become a U.S. citizen, whether their petition um, for their child is harmed or not. Yeah, does it get affected? So historically, talk to us about the lengthy process. It is a lengthy process. And so the first thing that people do need to understand is no matter what your status is, if, if you're a green card holder, just file the petition as soon as possible because the filing of the petition is the only time that the child establishes a priority date and the priority date is their place on the waiting list. And so once that petition is filed, historically, the situation has been for Filipinos only throughout the world. It's the only country in the world where it's actually the waiting list for a green card holder parent is actually, shor actually shorter. Shorter. Than shorter than if a parent is a U.S. citizen. And so it doesn't make sense. I know, I'm scratching my head about that. <laughs> well, that's why I say the Philippines is the only country in the world where historically that's been the situation. And so individuals have known that it, perhaps it's better to remain a green card holder, not become a U.S. citizen, because they're worried that if they become a U.S. citizen, it'll take longer. It'll take longer. Okay. And so up until, well, realizing that history, there was a law that was passed a few years ago called the Child Status Protection Act. The Child Status Protection Act. Okay, right. talk to us about this act. And so under the CSPA, it tried to fix that situation so that people weren't afraid of becoming U.S. citizens. And so essentially this law says that if you do become a U.S. citizen, you have the option of either staying in the category for green card holders or moving it to the category um, for U.S. citizens. And what would you recommend? Well, because historically it was shorter to be a green card holder, most people would say, let me stay in the green card holder category. Right. So that has been the situation up until two months ago. What happened two months ago? So starting on April 1st of 2004, the um, process or, or the waiting list actually became shorter for a U.S. citizen petitioning a child than now a green card holder petitioning a child. And so a lot of people, including myself, only realized somewhat recently, wow, it's actually faster now to be a U.S. citizen um, if you're from the Philippines. And so the point is that for individuals who were afraid to become a U.S. citizen mm -hmm. because they, they, they didn't quite understand the Child Status Protection Act. They right, were and, still and they also had their petitions for the 21-year-old and older. Exactly. Right? So those, those individuals, first of all, you should become a U.S. citizen As now. soon as possible. As soon as possible. Okay. Go through the process mm -hmm. um, because you do have that option. Let's say, for example, the waiting list goes backwards again and then it becomes faster to be a green card holder again. You actually have the option of going back and forth to picking and choosing which category which you want to be in. Which category you want to be in. What are the categories called? Is there a specific terminology for there that? There is. So if you're a U.S. citizen petitioning a child, it's the F1 preference category. Mm -hmm. If it's a green card holder petitioning a child, it's the F2B preference category. F2B preference. Okay, it's good to know because, you know, that's a lot of paperwork to fill out. That's why uh, I would recommend getting a <laughs> lawyer, right? Allison can help you just because it is, I mean, and... I, know, I don't know this, um, what historically is the case, so it's good to know all these things that you're talking about. And at the same time, as we know, it's voting season. Um, us Filipinos don't exercise our right to vote. So please, if you're not a U.S. citizen yet, 
apply right away. How, how long does that usually take? Well, the process to become a U.S. citizen mm -hmm. does take about six months. Um, and so also for the individuals who have already become U.S. citizens mm -hmm. and perhaps they have um, submitted the request to the immigration to stay in the F2B category for green card holders, now that the category for U.S. citizens is faster, you should go ahead and make the request to now go ahead and to be move. put into yes. that F1 preference category since that waiting period is shorter. So for those who are already U.S. citizens, you should move forward um, with making that change. Mm -hmm. For those who are not U.S. citizens, you should move forward be with becoming U.S. citizens, not just for the sake of your children's petition, but as you point out, in order to become engaged in the voting process here right. in the U.S. Thank you so much, Allison. I learned so much just by talking to you. I'm sure the viewers did too. Maraming salamat to Aquino and Lo. Magbabalik po tayo dito sa Kababayan Today.